scriptures, Proverbs, Pro Proverbs 6, 20 and 21. Children, obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother for this is the first commandment with a promise that you may go well and live a long life in the land. And fathers, do not provoke your children to anger but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So these are scriptures that I go by and I often um, discuss with my children as well. Um, and also I brought some, um, some quotes um, for the mothers. And um, I'm just gonna say these quotes and basically you can share with me later whether some of these quotes resonate with you um, one quote by Ralph Emerson, um, men are who the mothers make them. Um, another one is a boy's best friend is, is his mother. Um, mothers play an important role in the life of their sons. Mothers tend to have a deep, deeper connection with their sons. Sophilus. So um, states that sons are the anchors of a mother's life. Another one is there's a special love between a mother and a son. And I, I, I really wanted a son, but I haven't been blessed with a son, but I love my, my daughters um, tremendously, but I did want a son because I wanted to experience the, um, the love that many women talk about when they talk about their sons. But I did have um, an opportunity to bring up my, um, raise up my nephew um, from a baby on up to about 13 years old. But it's not the same because he's not mine. He's my blood, but he's not my child. Um, and he's a very respectable young man. And I was glad that I was able to instill something in him. Um, he's, he respect women. Um, he doesn't talk down to women. He's not aggressive with them. So I'm glad I was able to um, instill something in him. I am, I, um, I am a sister. I'm, I'm a sister. I have a brother. Um, and my brother is very, very, is a calm gentleman as well. He's very respectable. Um, he opens up car doors for um, his wife and for his um, daughters. Um, he doesn't get loud with them at all. So I, I believe that he really did receive that from my father because my father never yelled at my mother. He was always real sensitive with her. And, um, and when I looked for characteristics in a man, I looked for the characteristics of my father because I liked the way he was with my um, mother. He was very gentle, very kind. And, um, and so when I looked at him, I also looked at my grand grandfather and I saw that the way my grandfather treated my grandmother was the very same way. And so those are the qualities that I always looked at uh, when I um, decided to get married. Some other um, statements or quotes I have is happy is the son whose faith in his mother remains unchallenged. And this one is by Mary Kay Blakely. She states that raising boys make women more generous because they are learning more about the child being of the opposite sex. Um, another one, sometimes when you need a miracle, do you look into the do you look into your son's eyes and see that you created one? That's a question. Um, mm -hmm. Another one is, I adore his smile. Mm -hmm. I cherish his hugs. I admire his heart. But most of all, love that he is my son. Another quote is, a, mother, a son is a mother's most precious treasure. I will read two more quotes. A strong mother's, a strong mother doesn't tell her cub son to stay weak so that the wolves can get you. She says, toughen up. This is reality we're living in. 
That's by Lauren Hill. And the last one I have is to my son. Never forget I love you. Life is filled with hard times and good times. Learn from everything you can and be the man I know you can be. And there's the boy that stole my heart. He calls me mom. Those are some nice um, quotes that I was able to locate. And so uh, within the next few minutes, you can basically tell me if some of those quotes resonate with you, if you felt the same way, and you can discuss um, any of those quotes that I just basically um, read to you. Some things that I, I discuss with my children, I find myself, when my children are near me, I find myself talking with them and um, about the Bible and it just something just comes over me. I just get to talking and my my daughters will say, Mom, why are you preaching? And so I'm just basically having a conversation and not realizing what I'm pouring into them. And it happens quite often. And so I tell my daughters, if I'm basically saying something to you and I'm giving you quotes from the Bible and I'm giving you something that is inspirational. Um, I said, it may not be coming from me. It may be coming from the Holy Spirit. So mm -hmm. never um, not want me to say these things to you because a lot of times when I get to talking and I get to, I have an inspirational something that just goes through me and I, I basically tell them. And so they always mention, mom, you just told me this. Mm -hmm. Mom, I remember I, I, I heard you the last time. And so I answer to them and I say, basically, there's something in me that's telling you that you need to hear this again. Mm -hmm. Never um, push a person away when they're talking to you and giving you inspirational messages. And um, quite often I find myself um, having these moments with my, uh, my daughters. Now I do, um, when they have their, when they bring their friends around, I do question them and I also give them inspirational talks as well because I wanna know um, what type of lifestyle they, ha they have in their home. And the only way to find that out is to question them and um, to basically give scripture to them to, and so they can ask me questions. And my daughters, um, they basically, they make sure that they tell their friends about me before they come because they know what type of person I am. Um, while I worked at the um, federal prison, this is um, the first, I was told that this was the first um, thing that ever happened in the, um, at the prison system. I had a, a, a father-daughter dance and that was the last, that was in 2019 and I was, very happy that I was able to do that before I retired. I didn't realize that I was retiring in 2020, but um, um, that was when the pandemic um, occurred. But in 2019, February of 2019, I um, planned a father-daughter um, dance at the federal prisoners through the parenting program. And I'm always thinking about different things to strengthen the families of the offenders with the mothers and with their children. And so um, I wanted to do a, a father-son movie night, but the pandemic came in. I had planned that for 2020. Mm -hmm. But um, the uh, father-daughter dance was very, 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 very nice. It was very, very elegant. The young ladies um, had an opportunity to wear their gowns in and I advise the, um, the fathers that they're gonna make their daughters the most precious being in their, their lives when they come in the door. Um, we had um, roses for the fathers to give to the daughters when they came in the door and they were able to take pictures. We had a, um, a, a luxurious dinner for them there and, um, and they were able to do their father-daughter dance and then we invited the mothers to come in as well to um, dance with the father and the, um, 
and the daughter. It was a very good program. And um, I was just amazed at how well the program um, came out. But I prayed about all of that before I came, before um, I, I did it. And throughout the preparation, I prayed about it. And so I asked the offenders, I said, when you all go back to your, your um, dorms, you need to pray that this program goes over because we, we, we knew that there were a lot of people that did not want it to occur. And, and I had to explain to the offenders that you are God's children as well. Right. Um, a lot of people see you all as negative beings, but I don't see you that way and God doesn't see you that way. So I want you to basically be the best male, best man, uh, best man of God that you can be for your children, for yourselves and for your family. Um, and, I, and I also advise them that many see that the prison system is a negative place. And mm -hmm. I said, even if you see it as a negative place, but always utilize what you have for your good. Um, and make something positive out of this situation, which you may feel is negative. Um, I said, this can be a networking um, process for you. You may meet some other people in here that you can utilize and assist you when you get out. And I advised them while I was there, um, I was their re-entry coordinator and I was also the job skills person, more or less like a recruiter and I went above and beyond my job. Um, I would call if any of the offenders were getting out within six months, 90 days to six months, they would give me the location and they would have to do some job research or, or either call home and, um, and locate any of the um, employees that they would like to work for. And so once they provided me that information, I would contact the employer and give them somewhat like a, um, a, a job reference. And I would sit, some would sell the offender to the um, employer and ask them if they would be willing to interview them um, when, when, once they're released. And that, that really worked on, in some of them. Some of them end up going to other um, locations, but um, for the most part, it was very beneficial because some of the offenders did um, attend the interviews and some of them were hired. So they saw that I was a person of my word. If you basically do your part, then I will assist you in doing your part. And that's basically, I, I feel that was my purpose for working in the prison system. I was there, um, God placed me there for a reason wow. and because I did not want to go back to working in a prison system. Um, I was working in the, in the public school system prior to that. And out of nowhere, I received a package in the mail. I didn't ask for the package. Um, it was from Washington, DC. And so at the time I was married and I, um, I asked my husband, I said, should I apply for this? And that was with the Federal Bureau of Prisons. And he said, that's your decision. I'm not gonna make that decision for you. So I basically said, I'll just fill it out and nothing will probably come, come um, up from it. So once I filled it out and mailed it in, two weeks later, I received a call. And normally it usually takes three months to receive a call. And so I received the call for an interview and I wasn't ready to go. And um, so the young lady called me, that was September of 1997. And um, she said, you need to come in for an interview. So with working for the school system, you have to give 30 day notice. So I told her, I said, I have to give a 30 day notice, I can't come. So she said, well, we'll give you um, till November if you don't uh, basically give us an answer by November, we'll just have to move on. Um, and so when she called me back in November, I basically, I accepted the position. I went there for an interview and instantly I was hired. And so a lot of things happened that showed me 
that this was from, this is where God wanted me to be. Um, and so I believe in you have, you have to answer to what he wants you to do. Um, if you don't, anything can happen. You have to do what the father asks you to do. So um, going into the prison system, at first I thought I was scared, but I worked in the prison system before, but that was state, this was federal. And it was a different atmosphere. And the state is a little bit scarier, but the federal was not. Um, okay. the, federal the federal prison looks like a university campus. Oh, wow. And um, it's very, very clean. Um, the offenders were a little bit more respectable. There were more white collar crimes instead of the harsher crimes. Um, but now it has changed somewhat, but um, the offenders are more respectable. Um, most of the offenders that I came in contact with were um, doctors, lawyers, um, businessmen, um, corporation owners. So this is, these are the, uh, this is the population that, um, that were in the federal prison. So um, it was not a, a bad place to work. I, I learned quite a bit. I learned about the law. Um, of course, some of the offenders will teach you the law because um, of what they have to um, endure. Um, it, it was a great experience. And I thank God for directing me in that, um, in that direction because he, enhanced my resume per se. Um, so I'm gonna get off of that box, but um, my years working with the federal prison um, was enjoyable. It was a learning experience and I will not take anything for my experiences. Now I am back in the public school system and um, daily I'm always counseling, talking to young, ch young children, mostly the boys because I see um, from um, my dissertation was an intervention and in juvenile delinquency. And some of the um, research that I had in my dissertation touched on a lot of things that I see in the classroom that I see um, with the parents when I talk with them. Um, and so I spend a lot of my time with the young males and I adopt some of them, um, and, and try to inspire them, um, because I see that what goes on in the classroom, they bring what's going on at home to the classroom and the work is not basically getting done. And I'm a person for my children. I, I, I would always tell my daughters, when you leave my home, always remember you represent me. And when you go into the schoolhouse, you act the same way you would act here at home in the school. You don't mm -hmm. disrespect anyone. Um, you don't put your hands on anyone. I shouldn't have to leave my job to come to the school for anyone. Um, respect starts at home and the respect also enters into the school. So I didn't have much of any type of um, issues with my, um, with my daughters um, in the school system. But I, I don't see that much in my classroom. So, um, so when I talk with some of the parents, I can see some of the things that should be going on in the home is not going, going on in the home. And so I try to give what I can to the young boys. I often tell them um, when, the, when, when the other ladies and the, I call my um, students ladies and gentlemen. And so when I tell them, if you come out the door, if a lady, one of the ladies come out the door, you need to hold the door. And I always advise them to say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. 
If you don't want to say yes, ma'am, or no, ma'am, you need to say yes and no. I don't want to hear yeah, and I don't want to hear no, because those, they are not words. So I, I tell them that it's all about respect, and you have to have respect for yourself. Um, so um, they ask me questions all the time. So um, they ask me, so are you married? And I say, no, I'm divorced. So they asked me what divorce is. And I said, um, when the, um, the man and the wife are no longer married. And so they said, well, why are you not married? I said, it's a long story, a very long story. And this is elementary, uh, right? This is elementary. Elementary. <laughs> elementary. And they, I want them to ask questions like that. I want them to, to think critically. Um, but I, I basically tell them, I said, I can't talk you know, give this information during class. We have classwork that we have to do. Right, right, right. But um, those are some of the things that I, I do try to do for my students. I, um, I tell them while they're in my classroom, they are my children and I treat them the very same way that I would my, if they were my children. So, um, so I want to get back to these quotes and see if anyone um, wants to um, discuss any of the quotes that may have resonated with them that I um, gave at the beginning. Yeah, I, and I'll go real quick and I'll let somebody else go. Um, and then I have some other questions too, but I won't, I won't take up all the time. But the one about raising boys makes a mother more generous mm -hmm. about that because to me, it seems like I'm not only giving to my son, but I know that he's going to have to lead a family. So it's like I have to give more to him to help him not only be not only be a male, but to be a father, to be a husband, because um, he has to take care of somebody else. That that's the first thought that I got when I first heard that. Um, that it makes me more generous because I feel like I have to give him more of my time. And then this just helped me um, if I need if I need a miracle, and I, and I was writing real quick, so I'm not sure if I'm standing right. If I need a miracle, I have to know that I created one. Yes, mm -hmm. that's the way I said it. That just mm -hmm. kind of helped me to to be able to look at my son and just value him as I mean, he's a miracle. You are a miracle. Mm -hmm. He doing everything I want him to do, and you're not acting you know, right, but you know, you're a miracle. He's a miracle. So thank you for, for sharing that, that quote. I'll pause and see if anybody else has something they want to, um, to say um, about a, a quote. Lori, I, I don't, can you hear me? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, the, like the second to the last one that she read, um, that, I don't, that one kind of resonated with me. Can you read that one, Cheryl? Okay, to my son, never forget I love you. Life is filled with hard times and good times. Learn from everything you can and be the man I know you can be. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the one that I always share with my son. I remember when my older son was in first grade and the teacher had like a, on the wall, it's not what you do for your children, it's what you teach them to do for themselves. And I wanted to raise good sons. So knowing that one day they would likely become somebody's husband or become a father mm -hmm. and to, to not spoil them because it's like, I used to tell them, I won't be with you always. And I want, to prepare you for life and make good decisions because you can be out there with all these other kids, but if something happens, you may be standing on the sidelines, but you will be judged to be guilty just like the person who's doing something wrong. And always remember that there are consequences to every decision that you make. So while you're making that decision, you better weigh all the consequences. You're never gonna know all of them, but you better stop and think critically about what's going on because right. our, our young men are judged so much more harshly than, and I said, you know, if you get in the system, you know, everything is a function of where you are, the lawyer, the location, the jury, 
There are so many factors that are beyond your control, which affects your outcome. So think long and hard about the decisions that you make and the possible consequences. And whatever you do, it's gonna affect you long-term. So, so that, that one kind of, kind of resonated with me. You know, teach them how to cook, teach them how to do laundry, teach them how to think critically and, and, and know that, you know, it, oftentimes life is about preparation meeting opportunity. And you may not always get the opportunity, but when it comes, you need to be prepared for it. And, and that's how you kind of keep it in, in education, education, and education. So the late Lori heard me say this story uh, you know, all the time. I, I don't care what setting, I don't care what setting we're in. That that's right. Because you know, the saying says if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. Right. Be that's because correct. then you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. But if you yeah. get that education, you are empowering yourself to handle most situations that you come up against. Yeah. So, but I enjoyed yeah. your presentation, Cheryl. Yeah. Dr. Dr. Yeah. Cook. Thank yeah. you. Dr. Cook, it's encouraging to um, know that you have somebody like you, Cheryl, that we as mothers with sons have somebody like you who you know you're working on that end and you're helping us out you know you're you're you care somebody who cares um to be so sensitive and to not have sons but you're just you're just as sensitive and um and help you're working just as hard as we are as as mothers so we appreciate that i appreciate that one other thing that i i've, I've already selected the persons that I want my daughters to marry, but they don't. They don't want to listen to me. I tell them, I say, you have to. You have to look at the family structures of the, the persons that you deal with. They they are very good friends, and I try to tell them. I said, that is a person that I want you to marry. I said, now when I look at his family, um, they they are beautiful, and I said that's the type of relationship that you want. And I told her when I got married. I somewhat looked at the family structure, but the family structure of the person that I married was broken. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I should have taken into account. Mm -hmm. wow. So I, I tell them, this is what I want you all to see. This is what I want you all to have. And, and I show them scriptures in the Bible um, about that. And um, they listen, but they basically say, mom, you can't basically, we, we don't want planned marriages. And so I said, well, I just want what's best for my daughters. That's right. So, um, but I tell them, I said, you're grown, but I said, never forget what I, what I basically told you and what the Bible says. And this is what you need to look for, um, the characteristics of future husband. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope they continue to see what I'm talking about. But um is someone that's, in, is, that's at the church. And I told him, I said, you know the family. The family is beautiful. You get along with the family. So um. don't, don't tell their business. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> but, but yeah, that, that is, that's great. Yeah, to, to be able to look at. You hear a lot of mothers, um, even mothers of sons, as they look at that family structure, see mm -hmm. how they treat their mother and, you know, see how that, it's how, he, how he treats his mother and, you know, so, so yeah. How, how many um, men, Cheryl, was at the, the daughter, da um, daddy daughter dance? I believe it was about 40. Oh, wow. It was about that's, 40. That's, that is cool. That is cool. We actually had 50, but um, you had so many, um, parents that lived out of state, they couldn't make it. And um, it was only for the evening. It started at 530 until eight. And a lot of them didn't feel that um, three hours was, you know, enough for coming a long distance. But um, it was it was nice, though. Uh, we did have participation of 40, uh, 40 offenders.
And some of them had more than one daughter, so they were able to dance with both daughters at the same time. Beautiful. That is beautiful. Do you know um, Glenn Warren, who's who's um, founder of Fathers Forever? No, I don't know him. I was going to ask Glenn to join us tonight. Glenn has spoken on this platform and I was going to ask him to join us, but he is so busy because I had asked him before. I forget who was speaking. I asked him if he could just sit in and join. And then now Glenn, Margo, um, Glenn is now working with um, Judge Webster. Oh, okay. So he and, he and Judge kind of um, connected. And just um, Glenn takes me in from... Can you guys hear me? It says my internet is unstable. Am I yeah, I can, I can hear you. Okay. But Glenn takes men who are behind in their child support and who may be facing jail time, and then they have to go through his program to avoid jail time. So mm -hmm. but I thought about you when I was reading your bio, and I love his program. I love, and I know you know Dr. Kimberly. Yes. Mm -hmm. What she has doing with our sons. And um, it's just, I mean, everybody, it's, everybody's needed. So thank you for what you do and what you're doing, what you've done, what you have done in the past for our guys um, in the prisons, making them like you're not, you're not, um, you're not any less valuable than the, the man on the outside. So thank you for doing that. I will be starting my podcast um, within the next two weeks. And that my podcast is called corrections corner so i will um feature a lot of um offenders that were released so they can talk about um their um issues that they're experiencing now um anything any inspirational moments that they have now that they can reach out to others because i will be placing this um my platform on um on face facetime facebook and also YouTube, so um, so I can possibly reach others. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to reach a lot of fathers, so a lot of the fathers can reach their uh, male male children, but also the females because females are filling up the prisons now as well. So yeah. we yeah. we want to we want to re reverse th those cycles so we can have more empowered children in our communities. Yes. Yes, yes. I know um, Glenn was saying he has a, you know, the program for the fathers. And he said, if I could get somebody to teach the wives, the mothers of the children to not to, to how to control their anger. You know, if you're missing a bunch, lot of money, you're just going to be angry to how to work that anger. So while the men get it together. So he, you know, it's just an excellent program that he has. And I told him, I said, when I retire, I'm going to look you up so that we can. Um, <laughs> thanks. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but anybody else, any other comments or questions for um, Dr. Cook? Anybody else? I want to applaud Dr. Cook. Um, you know, after she retired, now she's in the elementary uh, school system. Um, it kind of reminds me of, of, of a similar experience that I had that I never wanted to teach at the secondary level. I taught at the college level. And I said, God put me over there at that end to see how important it was to go back to the beginning. So when I came here, that's why I started tutoring at the Hope House because we have to pour in the children when they're young. And she kind of had like the reverse of it. So she saw what was happening over there in the penal system. And now she can bring that experience to developing the elementary kids. So I applaud you for doing that. Thank you so much. Um, can you take about five minutes or so, or maybe less than five, and just talk about the Paths, the um, Paths University? Paths University. Um, well, I um, I was introduced to Paths University uh, by the organization that I'm a member of, which is the International Institute for African Scholars. Um, basically, that particular organization is One Africa, One Vision, um, One Love. So the president of, the, uh, of that organization introduced me to the president of PATHS. And so um, I've been working with them since March of, um, of this year. And, um, and he asked me if I would be the, the vice president of the um, university we're building um, in West Guinea, Africa. 
Uh, West Guinea, Africa is a, an area that it really needs a lot of infrastructure there. Um, it's very poor. A lot of the um, people, they're still living in, um, it's a poverty stricken area. Um, the government was basically just overtaken by another um, president um, within the last two months. And, but actually that particular president is actually making things better for the citizens in West Guinea. So, um, and he welcomes us for building a um, university in, um, in West Guinea. They don't have anything in that particular area. Um, and they have different countries surrounding uh, West Guinea, but West Guinea is the, the location that is uh, most poverty stricken. So we're trying to um, bring a university there to enhance the, their education, um, bring jobs, um, build roads in the, in the area, build power. Because when we talk to people in um, West Guinea, sometimes they don't, their, their power is out because this, this, the, their solar power is so low there and they really don't have a lot of money for that. So um, they need a hospital there. So we're basically trying to gather funds to build a hospital there as well, but we're starting with the university first. And um, we're trying to make it so, or trying to have it so the um, citizens there will have free education. Um, we're trying to build homes there, um, roads so they can come in from other cities. They can import and export from other cities. So right now they're, um, they're importing things from China and who knows what China is doing to anything. Um, I know I try not to buy things from China. I, I, I don't, I try to buy things from the United States and now I'm reaching out to purchase things from Africa because they're in need of a lot of different resources They're in need of money. Um, and when I have conversations with a lot of the people from the different countries in Africa, from what we learned growing up, it's not actually true. Um, there are some beautiful um, areas in, in Africa. They, this, is a, this is a continent that is um, rich with many uh, resources, uh, minerals, all of those items. And but the thing is, a lot of people don't realize that you have other countries such as Britain and France that colonize them, but they have to pay so much money to Britain and France. And so when you have to pay so much money to those locations, you're not, the citizens are basically left uh, poverty stricken. So, but a lot of people during those times of colonialization, didn't realize what they were actually doing to um, achieve um, independence or freedom. So that's the reason why they are so um, poverty stricken because all of their resources and money, they're going to other, other countries. So we're trying to um, help them um, enhance, empower them, um, and, and we come to realize a lot of them are so very intelligent and um, they are very intelligent, but they just don't have the opportunity. So we're trying to, um, you know, instill opportunities to, in the areas. So um, they can- So Charlotte, I think you shared a flyer with me or, or the leaflet. If you'll send that to me again, I may still have it. I'll send it out to this community just cause I know you're, you know, you're um, asking, we can donate and help financially so I can share that with the group. Okay, thank you. We had a soft launch last Saturday and um, there were some people from West Guinea that was able to come um, from West Guinea during the soft launch and it was it was um, well attended, but okay. I will send that, I will send that okay. out to you. Okay, great, great. Anything else from anybody else? Hi, um, Jessica, thank you for joining us. 
Absolutely. Thank you for reminding me tonight. Um, anything else from anybody? Dr. Cook, thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome. Um, and I'll be touching base. I have this recorded, so I'll send you the recording. If there's anything you can use um, in your ministries going forward, you can just cut it up however you want to need to cut the video up and use it. But um, I don't have anything else. If, if nobody else has anything, I'll ask if you could uh, close us in prayer. A great job tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Father God, for this evening. Thank you for guiding me through this presentation. I hope, Father God, that someone receives something from my presentation that will help inspire them to help others in your name, Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that you brought my way. Thank you for guiding me through this purpose for you and for your people. In thy name, amen. 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 Thank you so much. And we'll be in touch. Thank you, everybody. I have a wonderful night. Thank you for inviting me. Inviting. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.